strap in for a rather interesting edition of the meeting. But once it's all said and done, after I freaked you out a little bit, I'm going to give you an example of who we want to be and the one thing that may keep us all going to make our lives even better every single day. So let's start the meeting. Whatever you're going through, you will get through it because you're here. And that means you are not alone. This is The Meaningful Meeting. Now your host, Ace Cannon. So I'll be honest with you, there are days, this is one of them, and lately for the past couple of weeks, you know, there wasn't a meaningful meeting last week. For whatever reason, I haven't been inspired to be here. I haven't been inspired to share anything with you. I don't think I've had anything to give you. I'm not sure that I have anything to give you this week, but I just felt like I wanted to do this. Maybe because as usual, I, I need it for me more than uh, you need it. So this is going to be a little bit of a different edition for the Meaningful Meeting. If this is your first time here, now normally there's an idea, a concept, a theme that runs through it. But today we're kind of scattered. We're kind of picking up a, 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 a mishmash of things and throwing them all together because there are a lot of different things that are happening, a lot of different things that are going on. And thus, we find ourselves in a rather unique situation. Now, let me preface this with the same thing I preface it with every single week is that I'm not a therapist. I'm not a doctor. I don't um, know a lot. I just know what I've been through and I know what I've experienced. And the idea and the concept that through what I've experienced or what I'm going through, it gives a chance to make you and your life a little bit better. That's what really counts. That's what makes it worth doing for me. Somehow, if I give you something that helps you, that helps me. And that's the goal here when it comes to the meaningful meeting. So let's preface and we'll start with this. We're going to bounce around a lot. And let me give you something to start with. Maybe you feel the same way. The person I want to be and the person I am are two very different people because I never feel like I'm as good as the person I want to be. And I know I'm not as good as you think I am. Not that I think you think I'm all that great. So it's not a, you know, not an ego thing. Um, in preparation for this today, I sat down and went through a lot of the old meaningful meetings quickly, just looking for comments, looking for ideas. And it's because of one comment that a lady sent to me a while back that I just saw that I'm going to share with you coming up. But I started reading through your comments and honestly, it can be overwhelming. And there are times that it makes me feel guilty because I know I don't have it all together. And, 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 and when people say things like, um, hey, Ace, your strength is helping me get through my situation, I feel bad because I don't think I'm, I'm all that strong. And I guess what I'm saying is it, it's not even a do as I say, not as I do. I'm just sharing and hoping that I'm giving you something. I'm trying to take the same thoughts, feelings, and emotions that we all share, whatever it may be with, whether you're dealing with, you know, loss of a child, difficult situation at work, all these types of things, pressures, you know, whatever your thoughts may be, anything that troubles you, anything that ails you, anything that you feel like is bringing you down. I feel like there's some, some commonality among those things. And maybe I don't want you to think that I think I've got all the answers because I don't, I don't have any answers. I just have experiences. And sometimes I believe I have um, a way to be able to put them into words or to express them that gives you the opportunity to say, yeah, that's, I feel that. I know that. I understand that. And maybe somewhere in there, something that I share helps you, which helps me. But yeah, I feel guilty about that. So that's, you know, thought number one. And I think a lot of people feel this way. The person I want to be and the person I am are two very different people. And I never feel that I'm as good as the person I want to be. And I know I'm not as good as you think I am. So a couple of notes to prove that idea. I have at least for a month, my goal for the next month is to not drink. 
And then we'll see how it goes after that. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit why. I've got a lot of things going on in my life. I'm under uh, a pretty intense amount of pressure these days. And I realized a couple of things. I've been dealing with a lot of, a lot of uh, things, more so lately than ever before. Now, my father was an alcoholic. My father wasn't the best dad, but he was the best dad. He wasn't always the best dad, but I love my dad as much as anybody could love a father. He was great. He was awesome. He got better as he got older, then he got worse, but alcohol was always a thing. And I guess lately I've realized that I wasn't just having a drink. Like, uh, uh, yeah, I'll have a drink. I was having a drink because, well, I, and I recognized recently because I, I felt like I needed it. Now, for me, because being aware that my dad um, was an alcoholic, and it's part of the family, his father was an alcoholic, I needed it. Then the next day I thought, I really need to drink. And then it was one night, I didn't have it in the drink, and I wasn't going to drink. And after about an hour, I thought, God, man, I need a drink. And next thing you know, I've needed at least one drink, usually two, every night for a week then it was a month then it had been a couple of months and i thought man I, this is guy this may be the beginning of a problem i may be headed down a road that i don't want to go down because i've seen what it does to people and families and i got enough problems that i'm making it even worse you know what i mean so being 100 percent open here um I decided let's just go a month without having a drink and and baby steps see if that helps clear my head a little bit see if that helps um take a little bit of the stress off the pressure off see if i feel a little bit better see if i'm able to be a little bit more aggressive with changing things in my life that kind of stuff that's all number two whatever you're dealing with here's the thought don't be afraid to ask for help now Help comes in many forms. Friends can help you. Therapy can be helpful. Doctors can be helpful. And I'm, you know, this is not something I should really share with you. But I'll tell you, because it would be uh, wrong of me to pretend to be open and honest and not share this with you, I think. And I wouldn't want anyone else to be embarrassed about it, even though I'm a little embarrassed for myself. I literally came here from the doctor's office um, because I am, oh, this is way harder to say than I thought it would be. I am uh, going to start taking something and I don't, I don't like taking things. I don't like taking medicine, but I need uh, something for uh, just the, ang for anxiety. And so I am, you know, see, and that's the thing. I'm not, I shouldn't have a problem with this. Because if you told me, hey, I had to start taking some for anxiety, I'd be like, good for you. If it's, you know, good for you. I'm glad you took that step. I'm glad you went to the, to the doctor. It's got such a bad connotation, things that you've heard, so many bad things are said about it and the reputation's so bad. But look, these, these types of things were created to help people. Um, it's something I did in 2016 for a while when I was going through my divorce. And, uh, at the time, after a while, I was like, this isn't working for me. And I just stopped, stopped. I was taking an antidepressant then and I just stopped taking it. Maybe it was for anxiety. I don't know. It's both kind of the same thing to me, but anyway, and the, uh, doctor freaked out when she found it. I just quit taking it. She said, you don't ever just stop taking it. And I was like, well, I did. Sorry. Because I didn't think it was doing anything for me. So um, I just felt the need recently to um, just try to take that step just for a little while. Like I said, um, I wouldn't want you to be embarrassed to tell me that, but I'm a little bit embarrassed to tell you that uh, because I don't like taking medication. It's the I don't take any medication other than vitamins. And so it's not, you know. I can't say it's something okay for you to do if I'm not willing to admit to you that I do it. Does that make any sense? So um, there you go. <laughs>
Um, so there's that. So we've come out of the gate pretty hot today on this edition of the Meaningful Meeting. Um, and here's the comment that, that, that I got that made me start thinking about all of this stuff and admitting this stuff to you and sharing this stuff with you uh, today. And then we'll get into a little bit more because ultimately there's something I want to share with you that really touched me a couple of weeks ago. And I hope it does you the same way. But this, I ran across this comment from a woman and it said, I just watched your meaningful meeting. I think it is a cool idea to openly talk about these things that we are going through. I have struggled my entire life with anger, anxiety, self-doubt, depression, stuffing those emotions so deep I can, can't barely process or function emotionally some days. I give my all to everyone else and nothing to myself. I have hurt myself in ways I still can't begin to process because of low self-worth. I'm touched and grateful to see and hear others are also in that continuous mental whirlpool that just never seems to stop. Well, there's a lot there. Um, I, I can honestly say that I understand that more than you could ever know. There's a part of me that feels like I could have written every single word of that. Um, whatever you're dealing with in life, you've probably experienced the same thing. That line, I've struggled my entire life with anger, anxiety, self-doubt, depression, stuffing those emotions so deep I can't barely process or function emotionally some days. Um, I get it. I understand it because a lot of times you think that the next thing that you do, the next goal you accomplish or the next thing, that that's when it'll turn around. Well, that'll that'll really get it going. Not necessarily so. You see, you're never too good or too successful to be immune to this kind of stuff. You're just not. No one is immune to this. Um, especially not today when it's even more pervasive than ever. Now, a lot of people think it's, you know, they're worse off than they actually are. So never think someone is too good or too successful to be immune to these feelings. Also, never think someone is too good or too successful to need a little help and understanding. I think a lot could be done if we were just a little bit more aware of our surroundings and a little bit kinder to people from time to time. But this comment really just, man, it resonated with me so deeply. I The part that breaks my heart, I have hurt myself in ways I still can't begin to process because of low self-worth. I don't know exactly what that means. I don't know if you mean you physically hurt yourself. I don't know if that means you've done some emotional damage to yourself. I understand it. I'm just hopeful that you haven't contemplated going all the way with that. Um, I'm touched and grateful to see and hear others are also in that continuous mental whirlpool that just never seems to stop. That is a phenomenal way of describing what goes on in my head 24 hours a day. Thus the reason that I just came here from the doctor that I told you about, because it is a continuous mental whirlpool that just never seems to stop. And I think there comes a point in life when you've, um, uh, just using me as an example, there comes a point in life where you can deal with that sometimes for a very long time, a very long time, a shockingly long period of time. And then you've got to say, I, I got to do something to stop this because it's, it's making me crazy. It's beginning to change things. I'm beginning to do things like drink too much. You know, in my case, lately, 
um, having a drink or two or three, or if it's on a weekend, 10, was helping to calm that continuous mental whirlpool that just never seems to stop. But that's not a smart way to handle it. Thus, the reason I have decided no drinking for at least the next month. It's not smart. I know down that road, there are bad things that could occur. And that road is leading me to a very, will, will lead me to a very dark place. Um, that I can't afford physically, emotionally, or financially right now. <laughs> so, so what's going to make it better? Well, okay. Number one, the honesty in that comment makes it a little bit better because you're aware that you have done things to, that you've damaged yourself in some ways and something has to change. Okay, great. You've identified it. That's that's one step. Number two, you've taken some type of action. At least in my case, I feel like the not drinking thing is taking a little bit of action. Going to the doctor is taking some action. Um, because a lot of times, I just give you my example. This is what we're talking about, me in this moment. I have felt like but I can handle this because if I don't, it makes me weak. I'm strong enough that I can fix this. I also have learned through a therapist that that's um, something that's a learned response from my childhood, that that's kind of how I have approached every relationship that I've been in, um, whether it be romantic, a family relationship, a work relationship. My theory is always I can make this better. Putting the impetus on me to make the change. Putting the impetus on me to make the difference. Putting the impetus on me to sometimes change other people as well. And that is not how life works. I always saw that as part of being a leader. That's just kind of, uh, you know, heavy, heavy hangs the head that wears the crown kind of a thing. That's part of the responsibility of being the leader. Because with great reward comes great responsibility. I've been rewarded with some incredible things in my life. Some incredible times in my life. Thus, I just accepted the fact that that's part of my responsibility. I can handle that. I will handle that. I can fix that. I will fix that. I can and will make this situation better. And that is not necessarily always possible. I have come to learn that can be very detrimental to yourself. And it's not necessarily at all the way that leadership works. So there's a little bit more about me. You probably probably didn't want to know. So I started going through all the other comments lately. And it's interesting, you know, um, I'm fascinated by this because some of you have been through so much worse, I feel like, than me, even though you don't know everything that I've been through and I'm going through. Um, and sometimes it makes me feel guilty, like I'm a crybaby. But here's one that stood out. Um, one lady wrote to me, said, uh, I'm still grieving the death of my daddy two years ago. I have to remind myself every day that it's okay to think about him, to cry and to think I'll never get over him. No longer being on this earth with me. It is hard. It is heartbreaking, but I know I have to keep moving forward as I know that is definitely what he would want for me. Thank you for your encouraging words. God bless you. Well, God bless you. Um, but you're 100% correct. It is okay to think about him, to cry, to think you'll never get over him no longer being on this earth. I don't know how old this person is. Both my parents have passed away. My dad died 12, almost 13 years ago. My mom died just over a year ago. There's something about that. I get that. I understand that. And maybe it's because, one, I wasn't shocked when my dad's health situation kind of caught up to him. And number two, 
knowing my mom had Alzheimer's, I guess, made it a little bit different for me. Like I knew the ultimate, you know, when you find out four years ago, whatever the my mom had Alzheimer's. Well, there's no winning that battle. You can prolong that battle, but I had to watch that. And so her passing was a relief because I knew that finally she wasn't hurting anymore because it did terrible things to her. So that gave me some solace in the fact that with both my parents, that they were better for leaving this earth that they were better for going to heaven. And we all are better for going to heaven. Um, it's hard for us to fathom and understand sometimes, but that's one of the things that I have to remind myself that makes me feel better. Now, <laughs> when it comes to my daughter, you know, that's what I deal with every day. And I've talked about this before. It's such a different thing because there is a lot of guilt that goes into my daughter's death that I feel. Maybe, just maybe, if I'd been a better dad, you know, she wouldn't have made some of the decisions that she made and been in a car wreck. I don't know. That's a tough one. And I think all parents that have kids that die Deal with that. Like, because your parents are supposed to die before you. That's one thing that makes that easier for me to accept. That's the circle of life, so to speak. The kids aren't. That's a tough one. But here's what I'll say. If you know someone who's been in a situation, you don't know. You don't know. As I told the reporter that day that that asked me about the death of my daughter. I did not know a heart could break that much. Like, for example, maybe I thought a heart could break into a thousand pieces. But when your child dies, your heart breaks into an infinite number of pieces. And even if you have a child, you can only imagine what that's like. And then you can't. You can't. So if you've been in that situation, I hope you know that I understand. And if you know someone in that situation just understand that you can't understand and just be there for them just be there for them it's nice when people say things like thanks i really needed this today um one lady said turning control over to god is not easy after when i was talking about how i've been uh searching reaching trying to find a way to, um, you know, work through my issues with God. Hey, guy Mike said, I admire what you've been through and you still carry on. You are stronger than you know and inspire others to carry on. I hope so. Um, I'm not as strong as you think I am, but I do hope that I'm inspiring others to carry on. I really do. I really do. Here's one of the ways I hope you can carry on. I just wanted to share this. This is kind of hokey, um, but it's something that I feel is important. You know, I always like to find unique ways to make you stop and think about stuff. Like there's an entire episode of the Meaningful Meeting called You Gotta Find Your WrestleMania. And it's not about me, it's about my son. And if you haven't watched that episode, I hope you'll go back and find it. It's easy to find on our, on our YouTube, ACTJ TV, especially if you're not watching this on YouTube. It's easy to find because that's the title, Find Your WrestleMania. And the whole concept is find something in life, find a day 
that you can always pull from. Find a memory that every time you think of it, it touches you somewhere deep inside. I'm very blessed to have several of those. But I think of my son often. And I've talked about this the day we went to, we were leaving WrestleMania. And I won't relay the whole story again because it's worth going to check out. But we're walking out of the Louisiana Superdome with 76, whatever it was, thousand people who were there. And he was in the sixth grade. And he just says to no one. He just says, we're just walking out. And I, I wouldn't have even heard it. But it's like in that moment, God wanted me to know what was in his heart. We're just walking along. And I just kind of glanced down. He was on my left-hand side. And he's just walking along, you know, holding his stuff and looking around. He just goes, this is the greatest day of my life. He's not saying it to me. He's just saying it out loud. But I was allowed to share in that moment. You know? It was a special thing. It's a special day that often keeps me going. Um, I often think of that day. And I often think of days with Peyton. And I think of wanting to have those days with my new son, Dax. Because those are the days that you will remember. It's not even necessarily what happened. It's the feeling that you gave someone. The feeling that you shared with someone. And the thought that you could recapture that feeling or something similar one day. The idea that I could give Dax a day that he's like, Dax, it's the greatest day of my life. What more is there? Hang on to that. Hold on to that. My point is find something that means something to you. I know I'm a little scattered, a little erratic today. This is what's, this is the way this, my mind's working today. I'm going to share with you something that I saw a couple of weeks ago. This is not going to happen to you. It's not going to happen to me. It's just not. But it's the concept. It's the idea. Yours will not be as elaborate as this. You will not have the moment I'm about to play for you. The point is, it's the emotion, the feeling behind it all. I was watching a football game recently between Oregon and Washington, college football. They're in Washington, just outside of Seattle, the University of Washington, the Washington Huskies. A couple of things you need to know as I set the scene for you. Both teams were ranked in the top 10. Top ten. They are rivals. They play in the same conference together. And this was kind of the showdown that would set up who's going to have control for the rest of the season in that conference. Who's taking a big step toward a potential national championship run. This was the day. This was the big game of the weekend. Sold out, full house. There's a guy by the name of Michael Penix Jr. He's the star quarterback, projected NFL first-round draft pick from the University of Washington. And he's being interviewed after Washington pulls out the win late in the game. He leads a late touchdown drive, I believe, I believe touchdown drive, but not a field goal, as Washington defeated Oregon at home. The Washington Huskies wear purple and gold and bronze uniforms. They play the song because it's Seattle and it rains a lot. Purple Rain by Prince. It's a theme song. And this is the tail end of an interview when Michael Penix Jr. was caught on the field. So let me set the scene. He's on the field. They just won the game. He's a Heisman Trophy candidate with a potential national championship run at his feet now that he has led his team to this victory. The fans have stormed the field. He's being interviewed, surrounded by 10,000 students. The song, Purple Rain, is blaring in the background, which you will hear. And this is the very last question he's asked in his on-field post-game interview. Mom and Dad couldn't be here last year. They were watching your little brother, but they are in this stadium tonight. What does that mean to you? It mean the world. I had like 20 people come, 22 people came to support me for my family. And I appreciate them. They come support all the time. The rest of Husky Nation, always supporting. And I just, 
just so proud and just so proud of this team and you know I, I just thank God for everything that he allowed me to have. Go soak this in young man. Go soak it in. Thank you. Man is that a powerful beautiful thing that the sports can provide. And as he walks away he takes his jersey and pulls it up to wipe his eyes. So <clears throat> Why am I getting emotional? Because I'm a crybaby. That's neither here nor there. I would eat that up. I've watched this 15 times. Why? What's the lesson here? What's the message? What means that much to you? What means that much to you? You're not going to have this moment. You're not going to be on a field with 20,000 people surrounding you, chanting your name, singing Purple Rain, while someone has to escort you through the crowd off the field. That's not happening to me or you. But the feeling can happen to me or you. The emotion can happen to me or you. The importance of the moment could happen to me or you. Doesn't have to be that big. That's all you got to do is figure out what means that much to you. What's that special in your life? And I promise if you sit down and think about it, you'll find something. There is something. And if there's not, you're lying to yourself. You're not allowing yourself to feel as much as you should feel in life. It won't be 75,000 fans standing on the field screaming, chanting, singing Purple Rain. That's not it. It's not going to happen. You don't have the skill set and neither do I. But it could be something really simple like watching your kid play ball. It doesn't have to be that big. But I'll guarantee you there is something in your life that you care about as much as he cares about and as much as that moment. There's something that creates that emotion for you that created that emotion for him. Identify that thing and let that thing be the thing that makes you want to be better. Because that's something special. It's not going to be that. It won't be in that world, but it will be in your world. Take a minute. Think about it, figure it out, and use that to be the thing that keeps you going. Use that to be the thing that makes you want to change. Use that to be the thing to make you be honest with yourself and say, how can I make this situation better? Because I want more of that in my life. Because you need that. You deserve that. You got to want that. and That's got to be the thing that makes you want to change makes you want to get up one more day that's going to make you not harm yourself that's going to make you work a little harder that's going to make you not take a drink that's going to make you not take drugs that's going to make you do a little bit more and that's the thing that you'll tell somebody about one day when they're struggling and you'll help them and their situation because the whole goal here is to get you through whatever you're going through to get your life better so that one day you will tell your story of how you've overcome what you're going through right now. And it will become part of someone else's survival guide. I appreciate you hanging around this long today. And go find that thing make it better now whatever you're going through you're not alone you are a part of the meaningful meeting presented by the radio network copyright atj inc 2022